are um, we are in a little bit of a overbought condition, although not extreme, not too extreme at least. Momentum is near the extreme range, but it could get uh, a little bit more extreme, so it could break out. Uh, the, the market could run a little bit further. Um, Again, typically, you're, you're going to want to pay attention to these um, when they get to the extreme levels, either overbought or oversold. That can tell you whether well, it just factors into your decision making. You can still get into trades in an overbought market, but you're going to you're going to maybe have a little bit of a tighter stop or a little bit of a, a quicker exit strategy in case things turn around and start pulling back. Um, uh, you know, like I said, it doesn't mean that you, you can't do anything in an overbought market. It's just you want to be aware as the market stretch a little bit. And that's what these indicators are showing you. Um, it, but this is not uh, momentum isn't showing that it's it's uh, too extreme. Uh, breadth is in the extreme, but not as again, just barely into the extreme range. Um, this is actually a pretty good bullish sign that there's good participation um in the in the rally it's not just a couple stocks that are rallying the market or just one sector that's rallying the market there, there's, over the last week there's been a lot of uh, participation particularly with the small caps they've been participating uh, which is usually a pretty bullish sign when you see that um sentiment has been is getting really high and really starting to get to the right side of this we got to pay attention to that um uh, it, now if you've been listening to me for the last couple of weeks, I expect this sentiment to get really extreme if we go on a run right here. I, like I said, I think the, the I think we're, we'd start to see people chasing the rally, uh, and I think that all that would set up for a panic sell-off later on. Um, and in order to do that, you've got to get that sentiment to getting into those extreme levels again. Uh, people not worrying about the market dropping, thinking the bottom is in, all that kind of stuff. Um, and um, we're in a, a condition right now where that could happen pretty quickly. I think uh, everyone's kind of waiting for everyone else to buy. You know, everyone's waiting for the buyers to come in. And um, and it's showing up in the fact that we've been whipsawing a little bit over the last uh, uh, few weeks. Um, I think once you start to see some of those consistent days where we're moving higher, that like I said, you'll start to see people chase, and then we'll start to see some of these extreme levels. And then hopefully we get a little bit of a reversal sign uh, from the market that we could um, uh, trade. Now maybe that's happening today. It's that's something I'm kind of I'm kind of going back and forth with, um, but we'll look at that here in just a second when we get to the, the charts. Uh, buy sell ratios they're getting pretty stretched. Uh, but like I said before, they they can they can get even more stretched, but they're getting pretty wide here. Um, we're, this, this is telling us we're getting pretty close to an area where we we might see these come back together again. You see, when anytime they get really extreme, these are sell-offs. So the selling was really extreme. They kind of meant they kind of come back together. You get these extreme ranges. They have, there's a tendency to come back um, together. Uh, if that's something you have to understand about the market, and this is why we look at those stretch conditions of market getting stretched. There's a tendency to, for the market to move back to the mean or back to the, the averages, so to speak. And so when you get too far away from some of these averages, um, there's you know that you're in an environment where you're, you're probably, from a probability standpoint, you're more likely to move, move uh, back to those averages again. And... Um, and we're we're getting we're probably in that area right now. We need to pay attention to that. So this sentiment indicator is not extreme, uh, but we have been extreme. We backed off a little bit. If the market punches higher again, this should get back into that extreme range pretty quick. Um, so we're dealing with a little bit of a stretch to market condition, and that is that is important to understand as we move into the um, charts of the indexes. So again, the focus was on this June high right here. Could we break above that? We had already seen it happen in the NASDAQ 100, and we saw it happen in the Russell, or, yeah, the Russell 2000 uh, last Tuesday. Um, yesterday, we got the clean break above it on the S&P and the Dow. The Dow barely moving above it. S&P was pretty solid. 
this is what I'm a little bit worried about today. We got another gap up today. We opened up here, but now we're trading lower than where we opened. So we've got a, a bearish reversal candle. Anytime you're and you're saying, well, wait, what are you talking about? The markets are up. Uh, you know, why are you why are you worried about this? Well, because it's the price action, it's the behavior. Um, we're not. We're not higher than where we open. And whenever you're lower than where you opened, but still higher than the close from the day before, here's the close of the day before, that's a, that is a, um, a subtle warning signal that you could get a little bit of a pullback. Now, again, it could be a bigger pullback, but all of the price action, all that candle is saying is this, this should pull back from here. Maybe all it does is come back and, and, um, pull back to yesterday's close, fill in that gap a little bit, and then maybe we take off again. Um, but this is a sign of weakness. And there are times where it shakes it off and goes even higher, but sometimes this is the early warning sign. Maybe it goes a little bit higher again, and then it drops. Um, so you, you definitely want to pay attention to something like that. Um, and it doesn't happen very often, um, but when it does, like I said, now again, I'm not saying it's guaranteed to pull back. Uh, like I said, sometimes the market will shake it off and go higher, but from a probability standpoint, there's a very high probability you get some sort of a pullback off of that type of a price action. Now, we're two hours before the market closes. Could that change? Could we see a rally in the last hour? Could we rally back up to the to the opening price? Yeah, if we can rally higher than the opening price, um, that would be that would be positive. But I'd still be worried about the fact that most of the day it's been below it, and you know it, it can almost look like it's it's an exhausted move trying to rally the buyers are trying to rally the market back up uh, off of that gap, and uh, even if they because even if you get right back to the opening price, that's still a a indecisive candle that could lead to a, a pullback the next day. It, it, I, I didn't want to see the market gap up today is the bottom line because we already had the gap up yesterday and it was a pretty big gap up yesterday. Um, what I wanted to see was actually a, a flat to lower open and then buyers coming in. But the reason why that's important and, and why we want to see advances, gaps, gaps like this are usually created by um, well, first of all, what, what causes a gap, and a lot of people that are brand new to trading may not even know what causes these, is when the market is closed, there, there is pre-market trading and, and after-hours trading that, that can take, after the market closes, there is some trading that can take place during that time. Typically, I, don't, I definitely don't recommend that uh, retail traders trade the after-hours market. Uh, it's, a, it's a very illiquid market. Not too many people are, are in it. And usually it's professional traders that have a lot of experience, know what they're doing, and their specialty is those after hour. Uh, so they know all the, the quirks of, of the after hours market, all the tricks, uh, all the ways to sucker people, um, and they do it. Uh, and so, and because it's not a very liquid market, uh, you can get big price movements, and, and a lot of times it's price movements against you. Um, that they can take place. But usually the professionals use this all the time. And, and it, usually what happens is you'll get news that comes out before the market opens. And those professionals, they've got these thousands and thousands of shares they've got to either get rid of or buy or, or buy them. Um, and, they've, and, they, and, and so it causes these, this, this imbalance in price what 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 the price level was when the market closed the day before is not going to be the same level when it opens. It could be up or it could be down, and um, and so the 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 market will open at that new price. You know, it's kind of like if if you had a if you had a concert and um, and then right before the store opens to, or the ticket office opens, uh, you have the ticket office hasn't opened yet. Um, the the band announced that their most popular lead singer is not going to be performing or something like that. Uh, they're going to have a substitute or something like that. Well, obviously, when that box office opens, it's not going to the prices of those tickets. Again, assuming it's a marketplace, uh, are not going to be the same price. They're, they're going to have to drop down. But maybe the the, the box office decides they got a discount of fifty percent off or something to try to sell tickets. 
the, the point is, is there's going to be an, an imbalance. It's not going to be the same price when it opens. There's going to be an imbalance there because of some event that took place, in, in this case, a, a, a news item like that. Well, what happened yesterday was the CPI report. Everyone was focused on it. Everyone was waiting for it to come out. Comes out before the market opens. It 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 was viewed as being bullish for the market. Uh, and so what happened, what really caused this gap up was not necessarily, um, and I'm not saying there was no true buyers coming in. That's that's not a, a, an accurate uh, description. In the marketplace, you're always having buying and selling along with shorting and short covering. But there were a lot of people that are short the market that are expecting, and remember, when you're short, you're expecting the market to drop. You're going to profit from the market going down. Now, to do this, what happens, and I don't have time to get into all the details of shorting. You can Google shorting stocks. How do you short stocks? Or what is shorting stocks? And there's plenty of information out there for free that you could you could get probably better descriptions of it and examples of it as well. Um, but uh, but basically, you are borrowing shares from your broker, and you're selling first. So I, if I was selling, if I was thinking the market could drop right here, I might. I might borrow shares of SPY from my broker, and I'd be selling them right now at, at 423. Um, yeah, or let's say I yeah, did 100 shares, that's, that's $4,230, okay? I would bring that money into my account. Now, I don't get to keep it yet because I borrowed those shares. I gotta replace those shares. I gotta give them back to the broker. What I'm hoping for though is that that stock drops you know, we go down to, to 400 or I buy those back for $4,000. So I buy them back for $4,000 and I get to keep the difference. I sold for 4230 I get to make a $230 profit on that drop, okay? Now, what you have to understand is that if the trade goes against me, it could go up. I'm going to lose money because I'd have to buy back those shares at, you know, Four thousand four hundred and sixty dollars up here, and I would lose that money if it goes up. Now, what's really important that you understand about shorting is that if I buy a stock at fifty dollars and that stock goes down, does my broker care? Does he tell me I've got to sell it? No, I could let that thing go all the way down to a dollar, and that's what people do. They, they it goes all the way down to a dollar, and they're waiting forever for it to go back to just get back to where I got in. So I don't lose money. You can hold on to it forever, right? Because you own it. Shorting stocks, you don't own the shares. So you, so if it goes against you and you're losing money, your broker will step in and say, hey, you either need to put more money in your account to make sure you can cover those losses, or I'm going to close out your position for you and make sure I get my money, back, get my shares back. So there, there, there's, there's an urgency to sell or to get out if the trade is going to get you, not sell to buy because you got to buy back. So that's another thing is closing out a short position. You're buying to close out that short position, whether it's for a gain or a loss, you're buying it back. So what's happening right here is that the good news came out. Those short sellers are like, and by the way, short sellers, because there's an urgency when they need to get out, <clears throat> they're usually not worried about price. It's like, just get me out. So that's why prices can go up very quickly if if, if they're because they're buying everyone's buying all these short sellers are trying to close out their position and they're doing it in the in the pre market before the market opens and it's causing the the price to go up very quickly before the market even opens. So the gap up yesterday was not new necessarily new people coming in believing the market's going to go higher. It was these people that were betting on the market dropping that were buying back and getting out, closing out their positions so they didn't get, they didn't lose more money or they didn't get back more of their gains. If they had gains, they didn't, wouldn't want to be giving them back. Now, so what happened yesterday is that we gapped up right here and then we sold off a little bit. We were down and we were basically flat for most of the day. We were in this area for most of the day. And I was looking at that most of yesterday. I'm like, okay, it's good that we broke out above those June highs. That's the positive. But where are the real buyers to push it higher? Because the short, <clears throat> excuse me, the short sellers can only, it's a very quick move. It, and, and, and that can be 
it's a little bit more complex than that. Sometimes if there's a huge amount of short sellers on a stock, it could take days for those short sellers to get out of a position. They call that a short squeeze where the stock keeps going higher and higher and higher. And it, go, it makes these big moves higher because, it, because all these people are short are trying to get out at the same time. And remember, they're buying to get out. It's causing the, 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 thing, the stock to go up. And some people can trade that. You can trade that a little bit. It's a very short-term trade. If you recognize that it's, it's, it's happening, you can, you can profit from that. <clears throat> but if you're looking for a sustained trend to take place, what you, at some point, you've got to see the real buyers coming in because they're the ones that are going to drive it up past that spurt, okay? So what I wanted to see today was I wanted to see a little bit more of a flat or even a down open. And then I wanted to see the, the consistent buying. I wanted to see it just rising steadily through the day, going up and up and up and up. That tells me there's not the panic to get out uh, type buying. There's people that are, that are thinking this is gonna go higher. Usually, again, this should be the big institutional traders. They're the ones that move the market. But it would show me that they're they're um, they're starting to buy and that this thing could could uh, really start taking off. Um, we didn't get that, so we got another gap up, and in this case, we're trading lower than that gap. So there's more, probably more short covering. Again, there were some, there are people that are truly buying as well, but the majority of that move is is probably caused by those short short covering um, decisions and and. Again, I'm not saying that short coverings, but you know, a lot of people say, oh, that's just a short covering rally it is a reason to not trust the rally. Well, every rally starts with a short covering, uh, uh, um, with short covering. I mean, every time the mar market has been going down and it suddenly starts moving up, a lot of that early buying is the short covering that takes place. And, and so to dismiss a rally as it's a short covering rally, it's gonna just turn around and go lower again, is, is not necessarily true. Uh, there's a lot more to it than that, but um, we do want to pay attention to that because that type of buying, because it, it can be deceptive. And, and usually it, it, it starts with these big moves that, that think, you know, we, we feel like we're missing out. We want to go chase it and it, it might just be a quick, um, you know, one or two day move and then immediately it's, it's going lower again. So uh, that's what concerns me is that so we got a, a what looks like a lot of short covering right now that's taking place, even though we're breaking out and we're getting this bearish reversal candle that, that is saying that, that we could drop again. And we don't know if it's just to, to break. Maybe it's just to pull back to the breakout area right here, retest it. That have, stocks do this all the time. They'll, they'll retest the, the breakout. Um, and, uh, you know, what happened back here, here's a, here's a breakout, it broke out, all it did was it dropped, it came down to that breakout area and then took off again. That might be all that's, that's gonna happen here. <clears throat> but we also know, <clears throat> my voice is really bad today. We also know that um, we could, you know, we're basically at a 50% drop of this move, 50% uh, rally, or uh, we recovered 50% of the drop is what I'm trying to say. And um, we're in an area where this thing could roll over and and have another move down. Um, like I said, the reason why I'm, I'm not to fully buying into that happening right now is just because there's, there's still too many people that are bearish on the market. And it's hard to get a big drop when so many people are already bearish. Um, usually it comes when people are getting confident. They're, they're uh, not worried about a drop. That's what really fuels the panic selling, and so that's that's what's led me to my um, you know my belief that um, that we kind of break out here and, and run for a little bit. Um, so yeah, a lot of mixed signals there with what's happening today, um, and and there's a couple other things too that I want to point out uh, that we'll get to here in just a second. Uh, like I said, the Dow barely broke out higher, and it, and it did clearly break out again on today's move. But you see, it barely broke out yesterday above those June highs. And it, those were the last two indexes to do it. The, S, the uh, NASDAQ did it first. And remember, I told you, NASDAQ tends to be that leading indicator, or is it considered a leading indicator at times? And um, And so... It was when it it broke out early. It broke out last week, 
you know, the question was, well, would we start to see the other indexes follow? And look what it did. So it broke out and it had a downward move that retested the breakout. And maybe that's what the other indexes are just doing. They're just following what the NASDAQ's already done. And they're going to come down and retest that breakout, although the NASDAQ is having a, a pretty strong bearish reversal day today. And it's down from where it opened. Uh, it did gap up, though. And then, so this is a, a rever bearish reversal candle. You almost always get some sort of a pullback off of that. Um, and um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. And again, maybe it we rally into the close, and maybe we really rally into the close, and it it surges really high. You have a nice solid bullish candle at the end of the day. Uh, that's possible. I don't see it happening right now, but you know it's definitely possible that could change. And we'll check all this right before I end class. At the top of the hour, so um, we can we can see if it's if it's looking like it could do that. Um, but the way it's looking right now, it's pretty bearish. Uh, here's a, R a Russell 2000. It was the second one to break out, which I I told you would probably be the second one to break out. Uh, that's what we call a shooting star candlestick formation, a bearish formation. This one tried to run up, so we opened right up here. We tried to run up higher. And then we, we reversed, and now we're trading lower than where we opened, although still higher than the day before. And I think that's significant because these are the, the small caps are the risk on type trade. These are the you really want to pay attention to the Russell 2000 if you're expect if you're trying to look for bullish reasons a reason to be bullish in the market. Because if you see the Russell 2000 outperforming. The other indexes, it's telling you those professional traders are, are willing to take a, more risk. They're taking on more risk, and they're not going to do that if they think that it's a it's a false rally setting up for another drop, because uh, they're going to get killed on those stocks. You look at all those 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 small cap stocks that were the the SPAC stocks or the SPACs that were high flyers a couple of years ago, and and now they're like penny stocks almost. You know. Um, well, back when you know, when COVID hit, and this is important to realize too. Whenever whenever the Fed just lowers interest rates like that, they're flooding the market with money. You know that money is going to go into the into the the in the stocks. I mean, that was a no brainer. We when we crashed there from COVID, and, and they and the Fed did that did all that uh, what they did. We were going to get a huge rally, and everyone that's traded for it for a while knows that. And and um, now it's just the opposite. It's it, you got a tightening phase. It means it's going to be very difficult for the market to to rally. Um, it can still rally during a tightening process, but it tends to be more like what we've seen, sluggish and back and forth and all that. And that's why it's important to pay attention to the Fed, because if the Fed ever, if the Fed gets to the point where they're no longer raising interest rates. Again, that means that they're getting closer to dropping interest rates again, and the market will start really taking off when that, that happens. It's always forward looking, and if you're going to wait until they're actually cutting interest rates, um, then then usually you're well, you, you still can see the market rally, but usually you're getting you're going to be a little bit late because uh, the market's going to start taking off when they 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 think the next step for the Fed is to is to cut rates. Uh, or and that's usually when they stop raising them. They're, they're kind of in that pause. Um, and you know maybe we're and that's what the, uh, that, with that CPI report yesterday. That's what people were anticipating is maybe we're getting closer to that. Uh, it, that the Fed's definitely going to raise still in the in the in the next meeting. But again, they're they're thinking okay they may not raise as much and they may be starting to taper that off a little bit. And, and they're looking for any sort of a clue, any sort of reason to buy into the market, thinking that the the, the slowdown um, might be um, over. But um, anyway, keep an eye on the on the small caps. And again, so what I read from today on, on the small caps is they gapped up like everything everyone else. They tried to rally, and then it failed. And now they're trading lower than where they opened. That's different. That's a little bit different from the S and P chart. We did try to rally a little bit, but for the most part, we we reversed and we're we're trading lower. And 
And now we're coming down to where we might even we might even see a loss um, at the end of the day. Nasdaq's already negative. Uh, we might see the S and P turn negative, um, and that would not that, that that would be pretty bearish in the near term. All right. Um, bonds now bonds are dropping pretty dramatically here and i thought again the way we were behaving i thought we were going to break out to the upside uh we did barely break out to a higher high right here but immediately reversed it and then we haven't been back above that breakout so this is significant that we're moving lower today like this because it's it it could be that we're going to start to see more of an impulsive move down if, if so we're probably going to take out that low and go lower um, now there's a possibility that we are and we're in a bottoming process and maybe we drop a little bit and then start rallying back up. If we do that and can put in a higher low, we did have a slightly higher high. If we can put in a higher low and move back towards this area right here, then I would be I'd be pretty confident that we're in the in a transition process and that we're going to start seeing bonds um, rally up, start to rally up. So. Um, it's going to be really critical over the next week to see what happens in this area right here. Do we do we go? Do we really drop down further and get down to these lows? If we get back down to these lows, we're probably going to break lower, especially if we have big moves like this. Um, but if we end up pausing and having a reversal and start working our way back up to this area up here, and it puts in a higher low, that's something to pay attention to as well. Uh, so there are a lot of question marks with bonds right now. We just really don't know what direction it's moving in yet and so the key levels that you want to watch are this level right here and this level down here if we break above here it's bullish it break below here it's bearish so we'll continue to watch those areas gold uh, flattening out a little bit I got to spend much time on gold um, it's been all over the place oils made a significant jump today too and it didn't start that way. It opened, uh, it gapped up with the market, dropped a little bit, but now it's surging higher. And, you know, we, you know, we, we've been talking about, I, you know, I, I think I mentioned on Tuesday that I thought that oil could do a lot of what it did back in here where it was just choppy back and forth. I think we could see that taking place. Uh, I got into a trade. I'll, I'll share it with you when we, look at the portfolio but i got into a trade uh, expecting just to see if, if oil can at least get back up to these highs again maybe maybe exceed them a little bit it looks like we could get, get a little bit of a near-term bullish run on on oil um so i thought i'd get a little bit of exposure to that um but i i still think it could whipsaw i'm not i'm not fully uh, bullish on the, the oil trade uh, just yet um, but that's one to kind of keep an eye on there. Dollar uh, gap down yesterday, had a big move down. And, and on Tuesday, I was talking about the possibility that, that we completed a, an AB, bullish ABC pattern right here. We were st maybe starting to move up. Uh, had a little bit of this downward move right here uh, prior to the drop yesterday. Uh, but I said to watch this area right here. Does it break this area? Now, we've broken below it. But we've had a little bit of a, we gap down, we trade lower and then came back up. We opened lower here and now the dollar is trading up here. Um, we're, we're trying to, you know, it could be that this was the ABC pattern and it's going to go higher from here. Um, but it is significant, I think, that it's trading below the, this, this level here. Uh, if it continues to, if it, if it fails to rally off of these candles right here, and it, it could be that we're in a downtrend on the dollar, which could be a little bit more bullish for the markets. I think the markets have been hoping for a little bit of a weaker dollar, uh, particularly companies that, that do a lot of um, business overseas and deal with the exchange rate. A little bit of weaker dollar would help them. Um, but it could be that if the market is going to sell off a little bit, maybe the dollar is going to strengthen. That could be one of the reasons why it 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 it, uh, it um, caused the market to drop a little bit. Uh, but that's something to keep an eye on. It's kind of a critical spot right here on the dollar to pay attention to. Here's a key point today: those the VIX. So the S and P is up, but the VIX is up. Now I told you, anytime the VIX and the and the S and P 
are moving, and it's always important that you're comparing it to the S&P 500, not the NASDAQ, not the Russell 2000, not the Dow. You always compare the VIX to the SPY because that's what it's, it's measuring. It's measuring the implied volatility of the S&P 500 index options, and it's telling you whether people, whether professional traders are buying protective puts and it's causing the implied volatility to go up, and, and so the VIX is going to go up, and, 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 and they don't buy those protective puts if they are confident the market's going higher. They buy them when they're concerned. They either don't trust the rally, or they're, they're, they really buy them when they think there's going to be a, a drop, and they got to hedge themselves. they got to protect their long positions, okay? But this is a real subtle thing right here. The market is rallying, but the VIX is going up. That's telling me that the professional traders don't trust the move. And so they're not crazily buying. We're not seeing a, a spike in the VIX, so they're not crazily buying protective puts, but they're buying protective puts as they are buying some shares. So they they still, we're breaking out right here, so we're not the only ones seeing that. If we do take off from here, they want to have some exposure, but they don't trust it yet. So they also are worried we could turn around right here and they want to have some protection, start some protection. The problem is when it really starts dropping and everyone's trying to buy protective puts, the, the price of protective puts goes way up. So they're not buying aggressively right here, but they're starting to buy why the protection is cheap, why it's cheap to buy the, that insurance. And they're not going to buy any insurance if they don't think they need it because they have to buy it. They have to spend money on that insurance. But there, it's a real subtle clue right here, and it doesn't mean that the market's going to drop necessarily, okay? But remember, those professional traders are the ones moving the market. If they're showing a little bit of caution, we need to show a little bit of caution, okay? Uh, we don't want to be aggressively buying. Because if we're aggressively buying, then we're saying, well, we know better than you, and maybe you do. But you still need them to aggressively buy to push the price up because your 100 shares that is your aggressive buying is not going to move the market up, okay? So we don't want to be trying to outguess the professionals. We don't want to try to be smarter than them. Well, you can. Usually you're going to lose because even if you're right, you could be wrong. You could be right that that stock is undervalued. But if, if those professionals are selling it, it doesn't matter if you're right and it's undervalued if the price is going down, right? We want to do what they're doing. So if they're cautious, we want to be cautious, okay? Because um, it, it could that could lead, if we get a drop, big drop tomorrow or something off of that, you could see this start to spike up. And it has already been dropping quite a bit. Um, you're not quite in that extreme oversold range, but you're pretty darn close to it. Where it could you could start to see, you know from a from a probability standpoint we're we're probably getting closer to a spot where the VIX could start to move up than we are that it's going to go much lower. Um, so we got to pay attention to that movement today because that combined with the price action, price action is saying the stock the market could drop. The VIX is saying the market could drop a little bit. And so we again we want to we, we don't want to ignore that clue. Uh, the, the chip stocks. So the chip stocks, even though they've rallied with the market, the market went to new recent highs. The chip stocks haven't. That, the chip stocks peaked out right here. They had a big. They had the warning with Nvidia and Micron that, that caused it to drop right here, and it dropped more dramatically than the market did. And remember that we're looking at the chips because they tend to be a leading indicator. The chips are off the highs, showing a weak candle today as well. It, they haven't been able to break above the June highs yet. Are the chips warning us not to trust the rally? I talked about this on Tuesday, and, and we we said we you know we can't ignore, we can't just dismiss that underperformance of the of the chip stocks. Uh, but you know we're not we're not basing our decision on one thing. But we, I said tuck that away that the chip stocks aren't really confirming what the market's doing. It doesn't have to do – whatever there's that – by the way, and I also point out, doesn't mean that things happen immediately when there's that divergence or when it's not, when it's, when it's not confirming the move. But that's why you tuck it away because it, it could be relevant. It could be relevant right now. It could be that this is warning us that not to trust the rally.
Now, you talk about mixed signals, you could flip it to the transportation index. You're comparing this with the Dow. It had a strong move yesterday, and it, it clearly has broken out above those June highs where the Dow was just barely breaking out above it. Uh, it broke out before it, in fact, back in here. Although, again, it's showing a, a reversal candle, potential reversal. Well, it is kind of a reversal candle because it, the, the shooting star candlestick formation doesn't matter. It doesn't care if it's if it closes higher than where it opened or lower than where it opened. It's just the this is the star and this is the tail of the star. Uh, and it usually it is going to be falling um, off of that. But this was showing, you know, this was showing a bullish um signal that it was breaking out before the Dow did. The transportation stocks were breaking out before the Dow did. That was a pretty bullish signal. Uh, but now it's showing a little bit of a bearish weakness there. And again, maybe all this means is that we pull back and retest the breakout. But we don't want to ignore that. That that those are, are key key signals. And the reason why we go through this whole process, and I know some of you are probably sticking with the same process we go through, is we want to know what the market conditions are before we decide on our trades. So this is a stock-specific class. We're going to be going over potential trades. Do you want to get very aggressive when all the signals are saying don't get aggressive? You know, um, Or we have times where it's like, Hey, this is really looking bullish. Let's get into new positions and you know, let's let's get aggressive right here. We haven't been getting aggressive for a while, but we shouldn't be. We're in a bear market. Um, but uh, we want to make sure we know the conditions and we and we're not again, we're not just guessing the conditions. Oh, I, I know this market's gonna go higher. I just know it is. Well, why? Why do you think I just know it is? What good is that? That that's not a very good uh reason to uh to be buying uh, or because some some guy you heard on tv said it because you know, again there's conflicting people on tv you watch cbc and you don't know how to trade you're, you're really confused because half the people are giving you reasons why it's going to go up half the people are giving you reasons why it's going to go down and you don't know what to do uh bitcoin again it's bearish candle today but you know one of the things we're looking at is is this a reversal that's taking place we're starting to see some higher lows through here I think if um, we were to break down below that low, that would be very bearish for, for Bitcoin. You wouldn't want to see that. You want to see kind of this bowl-shaped move stay intact, and you'd like to see it break out above this high, which we're very close to, and that would be going to a higher high. Uh, so that's something to keep an eye on. And this is one that's kind of a signal of a risk on trade, too. Um, I don't know that it tends to, it, 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 it's intended to be that, um, but the, with the, with the way crypto is right now, and very people, you know, there's there's crypt, some crypto that's going out, that's going bankrupt. Um, there's people are viewing this as a speculative instrument, which means that if you start to see it really taking off, it, it's kind of that risk on signal that that uh, professional traders are probably taking on more uh, willing to take on more risk. All right, so those are the conditions we're in. Um, I do want to go over some trade, some some stocks though, but it, we we just make sure you're not, you know. I always worry about this that, that people will ignore the first uh, 45 minutes of what I'm talking about, and as soon as I bring up a chart, it's like, bye bye bye, <laughs> let's go into it, you know. Uh, Jerry's talking about it, so I'm buying it, you know, and. Uh, and there, well, you know, I always say that people, you know, you're, that's fine. If you do that, that you're going to learn, you're going to have a very painful lesson, but there's other things you got to pay attention to. It's not just the stock pick. Um, and a lot of people go through it. They go through a lot of pain before they make money in the markets because they have the, the, the lessons they're learning are painful lessons. It, it comes with losing money uh, a lot of times. And, and my job is to help you avoid those losing a lot of that money if you can learn the lessons before you make the mistakes and and uh and uh that's that's the purpose of of of, of listening to someone that's that has years of experience is that you know, you know when, when they say that that uh wisdom comes from lots of bad judgment <laughs> uh 
a lot of mistakes. You learn how to overcome those mistakes. And, and now then, then, then now you're the guru. You're the, you're the one that everyone wants to listen to, to avoid the mistakes. Um, and usually the ones that are the smartest are the ones that made a lot of mistakes. Uh, you know, I always, I always, uh, I, I, I like to listen to the home improvement guy that, uh, Man, if I'm about to to switch out that uh, faucet, he he knows exactly the problems I'm going to run into ahead of time, and he says, "Avoid this, avoid this, avoid this. Do this, do this, do this." And I get done with it. I'm like, "Boy, that was easy, you know." And but he 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 helped me avoid a lot of pain because he went through that pain already, and he can he can make me he can steer me clear of that. All right, so let's start with the portfolio. I did add a few, uh, a couple positions. Uh, RTX, I'm still hanging on to this. Uh, it, it's just kind of been moving sideways, but at the SPY, um, I, I haven't decided yet whether I, I'll have to look at the, the hedge, the, the SARK and the SOXS. I might just buy those to hedge a little bit, or I might have to decide whether I want to get out of it because this is screaming that we could pull back a little bit, and I don't know if I want to just hold that through a pullback. Um, we'll come back to this one. I did add C and Q. This is a kind of an energy um, trade. It looked like it, uh, I added this one yesterday when it looked like we had a we had an inverse potential inverse head and shoulders pattern and this is kind of a bullish inside day candle and uh, the market was breaking out looked like we could we could take off so um, this one's up a little bit today and and I'll probably hang on to this one because oil still looks pretty strong there's no reason to it might be one of those where the market goes down but oil keeps going up. And maybe that's another reason why the market is going down is because oil is going up and and um, if it continues to go up, that could be uh, put more pressure again on the inflation of the market. Uh, and then I added uh, ON, which is a semiconductor. Uh, and again, this was, you know, we're, we're bumping up against this resistance here. Um, but I felt like if the market is going to break out here and run, that this would probably break out as well. Now I'm rethinking that a little bit because if the markets look like it could pull back in this area, and that's that's off the highs there after testing that breakout area again. Now I, you know I might again this is where I might just hedge with those other inverse ETFs instead of just you know my stop is down below here. I have a pretty tight stop. So I could afford to wait and see if this could, because who knows, maybe the market reverses and goes and like I, I've been talking about for a few weeks. So that's part of the problem too, is sometimes you come up with analysis and this is kind of the curse of reading price action. Price action is very short term, but I'll, I'll look at this long term condition and say, boy, we could, we could run right here. And then I could get a, a bearish reversal candle and immediately I'm like, I gotta go bearish. Right, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm doubting what my analysis was in the longer run, and then maybe it drops a day, and then it, it takes off, and then I missed, I missed a good chunk of the move because I got shaken out of the trade, you know. So, um, but that's why there's a market. You can read this stuff, and it seems like you know exactly what's going to go on, but the market could show you something that causes you to maybe doubt a little bit what you, what you're analyzing, and, and um, you're not able to fully profit from it sometimes um the the little market curveballs that it gives you all right uh, now where did i get those i got them off of um the new buy list under muscle stocks i like the new buy uh, list there because these are stocks that are going from hold to buy what you're looking for is do they have a, a bullish pattern along with them and and um I already showed you the bullish pattern on CNQ, but that, so I was looking at this and it was, let me switch the signals here. It was going to a, a buy signal. That's why it showed up on the list. And I, I noticed the inverse head and shoulders pattern right there. And, but there's a few others on this list that, um, that I could, that we could talk about. Uh, I talked about energy stocks, PBF right here. 99 straight right now 
when you look at the new buys or any of those muscle stock scans, you want to you really want to focus on the 90 strength ranks. You know, just because it's on the list, if if it's a 65 strength rank, I might not necessarily want to jump in that. So usually I'm just looking at the 90 90 and above strength rank when I'm looking at these charts. Uh, this is one um, again oil stock you have this decline right here but it had a, a bounce right here and then it dropped and it, it, what I'm looking at here is it could have be that could be a higher low we could be moving towards a higher high right here now with with the conditions we have today could you wait another day to see if we can break out above here that would be a little bit more bullish if we could do that yeah that's something you could you could consider um, but that's one on the list that I liked. Uh, is it too late to question? Is it too late to get in CNQ? I can't tell you what to do. I can only tell you what I am doing. So I am in CNQ. I got in it yesterday. Um, I, I, I put my, I told you on that one where I put my stop. I'll, I can go over that with you again. So I put my stop right below here. Um, that's all I can tell you. Um, and I, and I can tell you when I make a decision to get out of it, I can, I'll, you know, I'll talk about that too. I, I'm getting out of it, but I can't tell you what to do. So, um, you'll have to make your own decision on that i do like i will tell you this with head and shoulders patterns here's the neckline of that head and shoulders pattern one of the rule of thumbs on a head and shoulders pattern is you can take the distance from the neckline to the base of the head and project that upward and that gives you kind of an expectation of how far that stock could go maybe it could go up a little bit higher because you have resistance up here a little bit higher but um I'm not saying it will do that. It doesn't always have to do that. But that that's anytime I see a head and shoulders pattern, I'm looking at that as a as a target area. That's why I like to trade head and shoulders patterns. You still have to have a, a trading plan. All right, another one on the list. Um uh this PLAB Phototronics 97 strength rank. Again, I like I like the fact that it broke out, it came back, retested the the breakout right here, and it's it was really close to it retested the highs today. Again, that's a bearish candle. That's why you'd want to maybe wait, maybe wait for a breakout, be a little bit to the better, maybe a better entry point right here with the way things are looking. But this has been going up pretty strong with the market being more sideways and whip size. So that's something you want to pay attention to. Is is it? Is it been outperforming the rest of the market? Now, if the market starts selling off, almost everything will start selling off. Um, whether it's a good stock or not, whether it's making money or not, whether the chart pattern was great the last two weeks, when, when people start selling, uh, and especially if it's indiscriminate selling, it doesn't matter. All that's out the window. Everyone's just getting out to get out. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen here, but I, I am saying that. Um, you know these these could change if if the market starts selling off, but they they should keep going up if the if the market is going up. Uh, if they've already been outperforming when there haven't been a lot of buyers out there. They should they should be at the top of the list when when there are are a lot of buyers uh, or a lot of new buyers out there. So you know, these are stocks you want to kind of pay attention to at least at least have them in a watch list you can keep an eye on. And then I showed you the CNQ and ON. Uh, there's another one down here, right at the 92 strength range. So you're getting down the lower part of that list, KBR. And again, this it's coming from it had a big pullback right here. What kind of what kind of stock is this? This is a uh, engineering and R&D services. Uh, sector construction. Okay, so this is under the construction sector. But it broke out above that high, and then during this run up right here, you can see higher highs, higher lows, acting like an uptrend. 
it's it's kind of look where it's kind of pausing it's it, it's off the highs of the day but it's pausing right at this breakout area right here so maybe you wait see if it can close above there get above there or maybe break out above here could be an entry point and you you know if it does break out above those areas you'd have to be concerned with this previous high up here it could run into a little bit of resistance at that point as well but um that's one that looks looks pretty good and then um And then uh, I, I just went into the, the oil sector. I haven't been in the oil stocks for a while because I've been kind of staying away from them, but they're still at the top of the list. And I've already talked about some of the, the well, CNQ, the oil stock I got into, but there's some on the list that look pretty good. This uh, ARLP, Alliance Resource, 99 Strength Rank. Again, it's been stair-stepping up. It broke out of that high and retested it and now look it's at the highs of the day and looks like it's breaking out again that one looks really good i'm gonna let's go ahead and add that i'm gonna add another one here to my portfolio uh, actually i'm not i, I can't I don't really want to add anything. I, I get market conditions near term looking a little bit more bearish. I know oil is looking pretty strong today, but I don't know if I want to add any exposure. I already have an oil stock, so I don't want to add more in this environment. So, uh, but you know, this is one that if you you want to add an oil stock, this is a coal stock actually, the coal sector. But um, um, this could be one to consider. Uh, there was this HNRG, Halidor Energy Company, 99 strength rank. Kind of the same thing we've been seeing. Uh, a little bit of a dip right here. It kind of looks a little bit of a bowl-shaped move, which I kind of like. I like these bowl-shaped type moves. Going to probably run to some resistance up here. But that pattern looks pretty good. Uh, and then this PBT, Permian Basin Royalty Trust, 99 strength rank. This drop, this looks like a higher low. Um, that that's a good stop loss point again we're not a, we don't know if this thing is gonna it could be this is wave a wave b and get wave c and then it goes up so you gotta be aware but i'd get stopped out if that happened and i'd cut my loss a little bit pretty pretty tight right there um it can break back up above here that'd be more bullish but you're going to run into some resistance up here again as well so keep that in mind but that's a pretty decent pattern overall and it ties into the oil move today and then last one would be um, where is it? Arch Resources here, ninety-eight strength rank. Another coal stock, but again, it's had this big pullback. And then it has kind of this little bowl-shaped move. It was going to lower highs, lower lows, and now it's breaking out to a higher high today. Now, again, this could just be a short covering move right here. These are two big moves after a big drop. Doesn't always mean that new buyers are, are coming in. Um, but again, every rally off below starts with short covering. Okay, uh, the fact that we broke to a higher high right here is pretty bullish. Uh, that a lot of that's what that's as a new buyer looking to get in. That's what I look for, right? I'm not the only one that does that. I, I, I hope you understand that all the stuff I'm teaching you 
I'm not a genius. I'm not a, I'm no one special. Anyone that knows how to trade and knows how to trade charts knows this stuff. Okay. So I'm just trying to bring you into the club, so to speak. And, and that's why you want to recognize this because this is something I would look for to go buy. I know that a lot of other people are going to look for it to buy. So if this was short covering, okay, that's great. But it's going to, it, that move, if it can close above this high, is going to attract new buyers to it. Doesn't mean that they'll be able to sustain a move all the way higher again, but that's why we manage trades. But th th this is that's a that's a pretty pretty good signal here when you've been trending down, and then you break to that higher high. So one of the first steps, early steps of a of a trend reversal. What you now look for this is an impulsive move up. You had impulsive down, impulsive up. What would really confirm this is if you pull back from here and it was more choppy on the pullback. And that could happen. That could that is the risk of getting in right here is you could be getting in right when it pulls back. But if you're okay with that, so you could just buy the breakout, put a stop down here. If it comes right back down, yeah, you're wrong. Go ahead and cut your loss at that point. But if it pulls back in kind of a choppy fashion, then it means you're probably right. You just have to wait. You're down a little bit. You might have to just wait a little bit. You might have to wait for it to take off again. Or you could just wait right here. And this is what I'm going to do. And wait to see if it pulls back. Is that the market looks like it could pull back a little bit? This would probably could pull back with it. And then look to get in. Get in on the ABC pattern. Okay. But again, there's no perfect entry. There's because the other danger is that it, it, this thing just really takes off on this breakout, and you get your pullback up here. I'm waiting for the pullback. I might get in right here, but you've got to capture that move because you were got you you had a more aggressive entry. So there's not a right or wrong. I'm just running through different scenarios that you that you can consider, different entry techniques, and it depends on how aggressive you want to be, how confident you are in a move. All right. Oh, uh, want me to go to the portfolio page again real quick. All right. What we'll also do is I'm also going to check the um, S SPY real quick. So yeah, you just wanted to get a screenshot of that. Um, I'll leave it up there for a couple more seconds and then I want to look at the SPY. And this is recorded too, so you just you can go to you can go to the YouTube channel when this is posted and you can you can get it on the recording as well. Um just go to the very end of, end of the recording. Uh SPY. Yeah, it's in fact it's gotten worse. We're about to go negative. It may have already gone negative because this is delayed a little bit. Yeah, that's looking pretty bearish. Oh, I was gonna because of that I was gonna look at the SARK. So the SARK is having a bullish reversal candle today. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna just put a stop down below here too, because that if we reverse that tomorrow, I, I don't need to keep this hedge on. And all I'm doing is using this as a hedge in case I'm going to keep the SPY. I'm going to use this as a hedge. So if the SPY does go down, this should go up and offset that a little bit. So the low of today on the SARK is 41.15, 40, 45, excuse me, $45.15. I'm going to just put it at 45. I stop. So let's add this to the portfolio. Stop in at 45. I've usually been, I'll do about 180 shares, maybe 185. Yeah, let's do 185 shares. About 9,000 in the trade. If I get stopped out, I'll lose 695. So that's half a percent, so that's, that's not bad. And let's go ahead and get in. There, I got my hedge on. All right, that's all I have. You have any uh, additional questions, send those to jerry at traderspro.com.
we'll see what happens. Uh, disappointing you a little bit of a at least a lower opening tomorrow. We'll see if that if it if it go, what it does from there. But because um, I could change, it could open lower and then take off again. And if it does that, that would be pretty bullish. Um, and if that if it closes pretty strong tomorrow, I would probably get out of the SARK and and uh, I don't know that I'd get into anything new. Um, you know, I'll try to wait until Tuesday to make that decision. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Tuesday for the next market update. Bye now.